Good morning everyone. I am Kim Awashir. Today I am here to give a small introduction on United Nations. United Nations, an international organization, was formed after the Second World War to maintain international peace and security. Today, four of the five main UN bodies, the United Nations General Assembly, the Secretariat, the Security Council, the Economic and Social Council, are located in the New York City of USA. The International Court of Justice, ICJ, is located in the Hague of Netherlands. The United Nations General Assembly, UNGA, is the main deliberative, policy-making, and representative organ of the UN. In addition to regular sessions, special sessions can be convened at the request of Security Council and a majority of UN member states. The decisions made by the General Assembly are in the form of resolutions, while resolutions are not legally binding. They carry a significant political weight and can influence the international opinion. Today, we are going to showcase the deliberations of UNGA. Thank you. Distinguished delegates, honorable guests, I declare open this session of the United Nations General Assembly. As we convene today, let us embark on a journey of diplomacy, collaboration, and discourse. The challenges we face demand our collective wisdom and operation. May this assembly be a platform for constructive dialogue, fostering understanding and advancing solutions to the complex issues before us. Let the spirit of unity guide our deliberations as we work together a more just and peaceful world. I invite each delegate to contribute actively, engaging in thoughtful debate and shaping resolutions that reflect the shared values of the global community. With a sense of purpose and commitment to the principles of the United Nations, let us commence this General Assembly session. May our discussions be fruitful and our actions impactful and resonate in the pursuit of a better future for all. I wish you a productive and successful session. Thank you. I now call upon the distinguished delegate of Egypt to take the floor. Mr. President, I would like to thank you on behalf of the Arab group for your prompt response to this agreement. There has been an extensive use of the veto against the humanitarian cease draft resolution, even though it was supported by more than 100 member states within a few hours in the UN. The Arab group stresses that the efforts put by a minority of states that are standing against the ceasefire are using white pretexts and justifications in order to prove that Israel has the right to defend itself. But this right cannot be applied to Israel, as it has already been occupied by the occupied Palestinian territories. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, what are we all waiting for? To stop this fire, to end the mass killing, and to end the zero-sum war? Can we even wait when the number of civilians killed has gone beyond 26,000 poor people, including more than 10,000 children? Mr. President, I kindly request you to proceed taking action on the draft, suspend the debate, and proceed with the cease draft resolution. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Egypt. I now call upon the distinguished representative of Austria on resolution against ceasefire. Thank you, Mr. President, Honorable President, respected country representatives. I would like to venture notice that there is no mention in the resolution of innocent civilians of Israel were massacred by Hamas. Also, no demand for the release of hostages. It does not speak about Israel's right to ensure the safety of its citizens. Furthermore, it does not acknowledge Israel's internationally recognized right to self-defense in the face of inhuman and ongoing act of terror. Austria aligns itself with the statement of the European Union. Then we once again emphasize that Austria condemns the heinous death attack by Hamas on Israel on 7 October in the strongest possible terms. The attack was unprecedented in its brutality. There is no justification for terror. But please understand that this war is against the Hamas terrorists and not against the common Palestinian people. It was Hamas from Gaza who entered Israel. 
to thousands of innocent people and to hundreds of hostages, including many elderly people and children. Then went back to Gaza and now hiding with the innocent civilians and helpless hostages. If Hamas is not eliminated from Gaza, they will certainly be the same after a while. If a ceasefire is imposed, it would help Hamas to regroup the source of weapon for the next terrorist activity against Israel. Hence, I request all the countries to vote against this resolution. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Austria. I now call upon the distinguished representative of Belgium on resolution of abstaining from ceasefire the Gaza Strip. Mr. President, Belgium, having navigated its own historical divisions, understands the power of dialogue in fostering peace. Today, we apply these lessons to the Israel and Hamas conflict, affirming the right to self-determination, recognizing the aspirations of both Israelis and Palestinians, urging immediate ceasefire, advocating for an urgent and comprehensive end to hostilities, humanitarian access, emphasizing the importance of aiding affected civilians, resumption of peace talks, encouraging direct negotiations for a two-state solution, international support, urging global collaboration to strengthen diplomatic efforts. Belgium abstains, not from indifference, but as a call for dialogue and compromise, drawing from our own history of unity. Thank you. A time for distinguished representative of Belgium. Distinguished representatives in this pivotal moment, as we cast our votes on the Israel Gaza resolution, let us not lose sight of the human toll, the shattered homes, the displaced families. This resolution is more than words, it's a lifeline for peace. I urge you to let empathy shape your decision, transcending politics. Envision a future where diplomacy prevails and peace becomes the narrative. As the world observes, let our choice today be a testament to our shared commitment to healing and hope. Let us now begin the process of voting. Thank you. Voting complete. Mr. President and distinguished delegates, voting has now come to an end. Those in favor, 153. Those against, 10. And those who have abstained, 23. Mr. President, you may conclude the meeting. Thank you, Secretary. Since majority have voted in favor of the resolution proposed by Egypt, that is, humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza Strip, the resolution is adopted. <laughs> Delegations wishing to make a statement in explanation of what after the vote are invited to do so. May I remind the delegations that explanation of vote are limited to five minutes and should be made by delegations from, from the podium. Thank you. I now call upon the distinguished representative of Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Thank you, Mr. President. Today, we are witnessing the brutal bombardment and indiscriminate military attacks by Israel on the innocent Palestinian people. In spite of the unanimous demand of the international community for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire, Israel expands its ground operation in the Gaza Strip. As a result, many civilians have been killed and 70% of them are women and children. However, at the Security Council meeting held on December 8, U.S. exercised again its veto power on the draft resolution, demanding for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire for the mere reason that Israel's rights to self-defense was not respected. My delegation cannot but deplore the fact that the unanimous demand of the international community for peace and stability to settle in the Middle East as an early date was mercilessly trampled down once again by high-handedness and arbitrary practice of one permanent member state. Indiscriminate military attacks and atrocity of Israel in the Gaza Strip is clearly a grave breach of international peace, security, and crime against humanity. However, this time, U.S. abused the veto power to patronize its ally, which will kill tens of thousands of innocent Palestinian people. If Israel's massacre of civilians is a legitimate exercise of the right to self 
defense. It would be necessary to give an answer to the question why DPRK is exercise of right to self defense? To safeguard the security of the country, people, regional peace, and stability should be dealt with as illegal. I repeat, illegal at the UNSC. The present VE situation clearly shows once again that because of the United States, the UN Security Council, whose basic mission is to protect international peace and security, has reduced into an arena of showdown, inciting war and conflict, and into a stage of injustice where illegal double standards are rampant. The crimes against humanity, which are being committed by Israel in the Gaza Strip, must be stopped immediately. In conclusion, DPRK will never tolerate US heinous infringement upon sovereignty, causing international instability and humanitarian crisis with illegal double standards. My delegation once again expresses our unwavering support for and solidarity with Palestinian people and hoping to regain their national rights, including an establishment as an independent state with Israel as its capital. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Canada. Thank you, Mr. President. Canada mounts every Israeli and Palestinian innocent lives which has been lost in this conflict and express our condolences to all families and communities affected by the violence. Canada continues to unequivocally condemn Hamas's brutal terrorist attacks against Israel on October 7. We demand that Hamas must release all hostages and treat them humanely. Canada supports the humanitarian ceasefire referred to this resolution as a necessary step to protect Palestinians in Gaza. Hamas must release all hostages, stop using Palestinian civilians as human shields, stop intentionally occupying civilian sites for terrorist purposes, and lay down its weapons. This is why we supported the amendments proposed by Austria and the United States to the resolution. Canada was to maintain peace with the Middle East, living side by side with the state of Palestine and security with the state of Israel. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Canada. I the call upon the distinguished representative of Ireland. Thank you, Mr. President. Ireland co-sponsored and voted in favor of the resolution presented by Egypt on behalf of the Arab group. We did so to add our voice to the overwhelming majority of member states calling for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire and to deteriorate our call for an immediate and unconditional release of all hostages. We welcome its adoption by this assembly on Tuesday and urge its full implementation. The people of Israel and the occupied Palestinian territory deserve nothing less. After two months of relentless conflict, the situation in the Gaza Strip is still dying. Thousands more have been injured and millions have been displaced. This is completely unacceptable. We condemn the daily killing of civilians and targeting of civilian infrastructures. The humanitarian law places obligations upon the state and non-state actors which all parties must accept without any conflict. The level of aid entering Gaza has increased, but it's still not sufficient for more than 2 million people. The conditions highlighted by the UNRWA Commissioner General Lazarmi on 7th December is a distressing call for action which no one must ignore. The people in Gaza need food, water, medicine, fuel, and they need it now. The UNRWA must be able to continue its vital work, ensuring aid at sufficient scale and safe, unhindered humanitarian access, including to children and other vulnerable groups, must be ensured. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Ireland. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Israel. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, again, we find ourselves voting upon yet another hypocritical resolution. Not only does this resolution fail to condemn Hamas for their crimes against humanity, it doesn't even mention Hamas at all. This resolution will only prolong the death and destruction in the region. Colleagues, on October 6th, there was a ceasefire, and it was abruptly violated not by Israel, but by 3,000 Hamas Nazis who invaded my country, raping women, 
beheading babies, and deliberately exterminating innocent civilians like insects. This resolution will only serve as a as a tie to Israel's hands and to continue Hamas's reign of terror. We present to you the story of Noah, a hopeful university student, immersed in the joy of the Supernova Music Festival in southern Israel, whose world was thrust into a nightmare by Palestinian militants. In a heart-wrenching video, Noah's cries for help pierce the air as she is forcibly taken away on a motorcycle. Please play the video. another ceasefire, and again it was abruptly violated by Hamas ISIS, who refused to release women and hostages, and continued to fire rockets and missiles on our towns and cities. Colleagues, this institution was founded in the wake of the Holocaust to prevent such atrocities from ever happening again. But this genocidal organization promotes the killing of innocent citizens. So I. I request all member states to support Israel in its attempt to eliminate Hamas for the sake of world peace. Thank you, Mr. President. That's the district representative of Israel. I, the whole board, the district representative of Norway. Thank you, Mr. President. Norway co sponsored and voted in favor of G resolution calling for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire. We deeply regret that the Security Council did not pass a draft resolution on 8 December. More than nine weeks of hostility between Hamas and Israel has led to a level of human suffering that has shocked the world. The heinous stress attack by Hamas started this terrible crisis. Norway has condemned the attack and been clear about Israel's right to self defense within the limitations of international law. We are shocked by the destruction and death caused by the ensuing war in Gaza. Humanitarian ceasefire must be declared as soon as possible. Civilians must be protected. Humanitarian aid must reach though they need immediately. The parties to the conflict must be sure that suffering and humanitarian aid is brought in Gaza. President, now we fully support the Second German Convention of Article 99 of the UN Charter. This sends an unprecedented strong message to the international community that must do everything in our power to further the to prevent further escalations and humanitarian catastrophes. The impending risk of collapse of the humanitarian system 
it is basically is impossible and devastating implications for peace and security in the entire region. President, a humanitarian ceasefire is therefore urgently needed. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Norway. I now call upon the distinguished representative of Palestine. Thank you, Mr. President. This Israel assault is a war against Palestinian civilians, Palestinian children, Palestinian history, Palestinian presence, and Palestinian existence. It targets the population, the homes, the bakeries, the hospitals, the infrastructure, the landmarks, the historic mosques and churches which stand as a witness of our diverse and long history. Israel has destroyed and planted our entire neighborhoods, displaced virtually every Palestinian in Gaza, brought back the memories of the 1948 Nagba with the massacres and forced transfer of our people. It also targets our present and future, killing engineers, doctors and poets. It also targets those who document the crime and inform it to the world, the journalists, we mourn Sabin Abu Dhaka, wounded in an Israel drone strike, was left to bleed to death for six hours while the ambulances were prevented from getting him. We tell Will El Dadao and his family had been killed in a previous Israel strike. We tell them, enough is enough. Please view this video depicting the aftermath of an Israel missile attack. Palestinians bravely cleared the grave by hand to rescue the one struck. In a somber moment, they discover a young girl who has tragically lost her parents. The heart-wrenching realities underscore on the unacceptable toll on innocent lives during the Israel Israel attack, urging a collective call for peace and empathy. Please play the video.
obligations. Despite the Secretary General's efforts in working Article 99 of the UN Charter, we deeply regret that the Security Council was unable to take the necessary steps to implement the UNSC's Resolution 2712, which is to end the conflict and maintain peace and security. First, we all recognize the right and indeed the imperative of a state to defend themselves against terrorism. That's why we must unequivocally condemn Hamas's public terrorist attack against Israel babies, riddled with bliss. People, young people were beheaded, and families burned alive in final embrace. Parents were killed in front of their children, and children were killed in front of the parents, and so many hostages in Gaza. We have to ask, indeed it must be asked, where is the outrage? Where is the revulsion? Where is humanity? They are unlawful and unjustifiable when the victims are targeted for the faith, nationality, religion, or any other reason. The protection of civilians must be a priority at all times. As each day of conflict goes by, the humanitarian situation has only worsened, especially women raped and children burnt alive. Lastly, Thailand reaffirms where the state of Palestine and Israel live side by side in peace and security. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. President, for the presentation in Thailand. Permission granted, Delegate. Mr. President, Thailand requests for an unmoderated caucus with a duration of 10 minutes. Delegate of Thailand, be seated. Give me a minute. Esteemed delegates, the chair cannot permit a time period of 10 minutes. Instead, it is 3 minutes. Is that okay, delegate? Yes, Mr. President. Thank you. Let the unmoderated caucus begin. Thank you. Delegates, your time is up. You may be seated. Delegates, is everybody seated? I, the Paul Paul, the distinguished representative of Singapore. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, Japan occupied Singapore during the World War II from 1942 to 1945. The invasion was part of Japan's broader campaign in Southeast Asia. On February 15, 1942, Japanese forces successfully captured Singapore from the British, marking a significant turning point in the war. 
The British, who had considered the island impregnable, were caught off guard, leading to the surrender of Singapore. The Japanese occupation of Singapore was marked by harsh conditions, forced labor, and widespread suffering among the local population. The occupation ended in 1945 when Japan surrendered to the Allied forces, culminating to the liberation of Singapore. In drawing parallels to the present, we are confronted with the harsh reality faced by the people of Gaza. The echoes of history remind us that the consequences of the conflict extend far beyond political boundaries, reaching into the very fabric of human existence. As we deliberate on the necessity for a ceasefire, let us channel the empathy born from our shared history to advocate for an end to the suffering in Gaza. Thank you. of Singapore. Permission Dr. Dolgan. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, Singapore proposes a motion on moderated caucus for a duration of 10 minutes with each speaker allocated 90 seconds. Dolgan, please be seated and give me a minute. Delegate, what's the time that you mentioned? Mr. President, the time that I mentioned was 10 minutes. The chair can permit uh, time up to 3 minutes maximum. Is that okay? Yes, Mr. President. Thank you. Then let the moderated caucus begin. Questions and, ans Questions and answers may be asked. Permission grant to Delegate. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I would like to pose a question to the Delegate of Israel. How Hamas treated Israelis is horrific, but the actions of Israelis towards Palestinians is equally criminal. Why not practice what you preach? We are focused on eliminating the threat posed by Hamas and strive to minimize the Delegate of Israel, please increase your volume. We are focused on eliminating the threat posed by Hamas and are focused on minimizing any harm caused to innocent civilians. The use of civilians as shields by Hamas is a concerning tactic that contributes to the difficulties faced in protecting lives. We are striving to eliminate the threat for the sake of world peace and grieve for any civilian casualties faced. Thank you. Any other questions? Publishing Dr. Dogan. President, I would like to pose a question to the delegate of Egypt who moved the motion for humanitarian ceasefire. After Israel's unilateral withdrawal from Gaza, there was an opportunity for Palestine to utilize the foreign funds for constructive purposes. However, tension arose and attacks started linked to the concern of Israel's proximity to Saudi Arabia. In this context, how can a call for ceasefire be justified? As a representative of Egypt, a nation with a history of broken peace, we stress the significance of a diplomatic solution. Building on our historical legacy, which is our own, we call for a sustained dialogue to address both the concerns of the Israelis as well as the Palestinians. Delegates, you have 30 more seconds left. Permission to the delegate. Mr. President, Austria respectfully objects to the moderated caucus on humanitarian ceasefire. We believe that proposing a moderated caucus may disturb the flow of discussion. Hence, I request the general debate to go on and give opportunities for all the delegates to express their perspectives freely. Thank you. Delegates, delegates there is a request from the state of Austria that is to end moderated caucus. The ones in favor of Austria may raise their cards. Thank you, delegates. As majority have voted in favor of Austria, the General Assembly debate may resume now. I now call upon the distinguished representative of Australia. Mr. President, thank you. 
Australia is gravely concerned about the dire and humanitarian situation in Gaza. Human suffering is widespread and unacceptable. Civilians who fled northern Gaza are now being pushed for the south, and as the conflict spreads south, there are increasingly few safe places to go. The world has witnessed a harrowing number of civilian deaths, including children. This must not continue. Australia again calls for safe and impeded and sustained humanitarian situation in Gaza, including safe passage for civilians. This resolution calling for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire is the world urging for these pauses to be resumed. Australia is part of that call and we support this resolution. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Australia. I, Nagol Paul, the distinguished representative of Cambodia. Thank you, Mr. President, distinguished delegates. My delegation strongly supports the Secretary General's effort in addressing the humanitarian crisis and ensuring unhindered delivery of humanitarian assistance in Gaza. We are deeply concerned by the escalation of violence, internal human suffering, and the immense loss of innocent human lives, many of women, children, and elderly. We believe that a humanitarian ceasefire is not just an option, but an urgent necessity to avoid further deepening the catastrophe. Cambodia joins others in calling for the conditional release of civilians held hostage by Hamas and other parties. Cambodia condemns all acts of terrorism and violence against innocent civilians, regardless of their race, culture, or religion, and condemns the heinous attack by Hamas on civilians on 7th October 2023. It is of paramount importance to address the root causes of Palestine-Israel conflict to enable both the peoples of Palestine and Israel to coexist side by side in peace and harmony. Cambodia urges all relevant parties to revive efforts to resolve the conflict through diplomacy, dialogue, and peaceful means to end humanitarian crisis and achieve enduring peace. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Cambodia. I, the whole board, the distinguished representative of Argentina. Thank you, Mr. President. Argentina understands that the project submitted for consideration in this emergency session does not address in a balanced way the needs raised by the Secretary General. Argentina supports the request for humanitarian ceasefire, the need to respect international law, including international humanitarian law, as well as unconditional release of all hostages, understood as all established civilians and other nationalists kidnapped since serious and perpetrated by Hamas on the 7th of October. Argentina expresses the strongest condemnation of terrorist actions of Hamas that are the root of the humanitarian disaster as described by the Secretary General. Given that the draft resolution did not include an express repudiation, Argentina has not been able to support it with its affirmative vote and abstain. Likewise, Argentina recognizes Israel's right to exercise its legitimate defense within the framework of international law, international humanitarian law, and believes that this recognition should also be included in the project adopted by this General Assembly. Argentina thanks the Secretary General and his team for the efforts they made and pays a tribute to the international officials who, with great and sacrificial efforts, work in the field. A mention and a special recognition deserves to those who have lost their lives for the fulfillment of their task. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Argentina. I, the call for the distinguished representative of India. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, India has voted in favor of the resolution just adopted by the General Assembly. The situation that this August body has been deliberating upon has many dimensions. There is a terrorist attack in Israel on 7th October and the concern for the hostages taken at that time. There is an enormous humanitarian crisis and the concern for the large-scale loss of civilian lives especially of women and children. There is an endeavor to find a peaceful and lasting two-state solution to the long-standing Palestinian question. 
The gravity and the complexity of what the international community face is underlined by the Secretary General invoking Article 99 of the Charter of the United Nations. Our challenge in these difficult times is to strive and strike the right balance. We therefore welcome that the fact that the international communities have been able to find a common ground to address the problems facing the region right now. Thank you. I, Nagol Bond, the distinguished representative of Brunei Darussalam. Mr. President, there is no country in the world that illustrates the collective failure of the UN more evidently than the state of Palestine. The UN Security Council holds a special and a moral responsibility to uphold international peace and security, and we regret, I repeat, we regret that the Security Council has once again failed to take much needed action on this. Many countries who stand by our Palestinian brothers and sisters have taken every measure, and I repeat, every measure to facilitate the entry of humanitarian aid into Gaza. Thousands of aid trucks having tens of thousands of tons of humanitarian aid have entered Gaza. Feeding hospitals and floating hospitals have been constructed. Ships have been docked, and the only reason more aid is not entering Gaza is because the UN bodies refuse and I repeat, refused to solve the logistical difficulties preventing all the trucks waiting in Rafa from entering Gaza. If the resolution's true intent was humanitarian aid, then it would be focused on improving the situation in Gaza, not improving the UN's logistical capabilities. The recent escalation of violence did not occur in a vacuum, but it is a direct result of decades of injustice imposed upon the Palestinians, the dismissal of their inalienable rights, the self-determination, free peace and freedom. To this end, Brunei Darussalam will stand in solidarity with our Palestinian brothers and sisters and reaffirm our commitment to a two-state solution leading to an independent and sovereign state of Palestine based on pre-1967 borders with East Jerusalem as its capital. We thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Brunei Darussalam. I, Nagol Paul, the distinguished representative of Denmark. Denmark is deeply concerned about the humanitarian situation in Gaza. The international community has a responsibility to prevent a collapse in the humanitarian system and to avert a humanitarian catastrophe. On this background, Denmark voted yes to a resolution proposed by Egypt. We would have preferred a text which unequivocally condemns Hamas' heinous terrorist attack on Israel on 7th October 2023 and which calls for the immediate and unconditional release of all hostages taken by Hamas. We also wish to underline that we understand a call for a humanitarian ceasefire as a call for temporary measures and humanitarian needs to be met. As such, humanitarian ceasefire does not deny Israel the right to defend itself in accordance with international law, including international humanitarian law. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Denmark. I, the call for the distinguished representative of Zambia. Mr. President, in light of the gravity of the humanitarian situation, the focus should primarily be on saving lives and livelihoods and not so much on the attribution of blame. This is a time to pause and allow our humanitarian side to take action. And so, Zambia re-emphasizes the call for an immediate ceasefire in the Gaza Strip in order to allow for the much needed humanitarian assistance to reach the people of Gaza. This was the basis of Zambia's support for the resolution and it our hope that there will be a cessation of hostilities to allow for the humanitarian aid to be carried out. On the wider question of Israel or Palestine, Zambia remains steadfast in the belief of the two-state solution. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Zambia. I, the call for the distinguished representative of Mauritius. Mr. President, is the matter of utmost regret that the United Nations Security Council has once more failed to assume its responsibility and to ensure a ceasefire, which restores peace and stops the senseless killing of innocent civilians.
the credibility of the existence of our organization is at stake. Let us hope that today the Security Council takes a unanimous decision to call for a cessation of hostilities. Mauritius is appalled and deeply concerned about the continuous humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza. We are witnessing loss of numerous innocent lives and the atrocious suffering of multitude number of civilians caused by the unjustified, unprecedented escalation and scale of violence. The siege of Gaza has led to killing of thousands of Palestinians, thousands injured and the displacement of 2 million persons. Of those killed, the majority are women and children. The lack of life-saving essential supplies such as medicine and water have caused a collapse in the sanitation services. Due to the heavy and persistent bombing is being pursued amid apocalyptic conditions. This situation has now reached the abysmal depth of despair and humanity can no longer turn a blind eye on Gaza. Mr. President, like all countries, Mauritius was hopeful that the humanitarian pause would have led to a lasting ceasefire. Mauritius deploys that talk to expect the crews have collapsed. In absence of a ceasefire and the fallen resumption of hostilities, we are concerned about the humanitarian situation which is deteriorating day by day, notwithstanding the current context of polarization, diplomacy and dialogue remain the only solution to resolve this conflict. Now it is more than ever crucial that the international expeditiously has redoubled its efforts. We firmly believe that the only way to move forward is through peaceful resolution and a permanent ceasefire, with United Nations playing a pivotal role alongside regional and international partners. Mr. President, Mauritius continues to support the establishment of viable and Palestine state alongside Israel and is the only way to achieve a just lasting and comprehensive peace in this region. In line with our principal position, we call upon an early resumption of negotiation and a peaceful resolution of this enduring conflict. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Mauritius. I now call upon the distinguished representative of the United States of America. Thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues, the last two months have been devastating for Palestinians, Israelis, Jewish, and Muslim people, and all those who dream of sustainable peace that the United States wants to work towards. There are many aspects of the resolution that we do support. We agree that the humanitarian situation in Gaza is dire and requires urgent and sustained attention. That civilians and innocent people desperately need food, water, shelter, and medical care. They must be protected consistently under international humanitarian law. In addition, the United States supports condemning Hamas for its terrorist actions on October 7th. Burning down houses while families are inside and taking civilians hostage is abhorrent. This is why the United States is condemning and rejecting Hamas's terrorist actions today. It's our opinion that any ceasefire right now would be temporary and dangerous. Our goal must be to stop the death and the destruction for the law for the long term. We must work towards building a truly sustainable peace, one where Israelis and Palestinians can live side by side in states of their own, so that generations to come you know, experience the devastation of the last two months and finally realize freedom, security, and peace. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Of the United States of America. I now call upon the distinguished representative of Maldives. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I stand before you to deliver a crucial message from the President of Maldives, His Excellency Dr. Mohamed Muizu. Our appreciation goes to you, Mr. President, for convening this special session responding to the Security Council's failure in addressing the ongoing Gaza crisis. A month ago, the Maldives joined 120 member states in calling for a humanitarian truth.
truth. Yet, the Security Council failed to act decisively. Today, we question the value of humanity as a veto obstructs the efforts to end atrocities. The Security Council must reform, ensuring transparency and accountability. As we reconvene, the Security Council must reform and the suffering persons, urging the International Criminal Court to investigate possible war crimes done by Israel. Maldives supports the sovereign state of Palestine and calls for international aid to rebuild Gaza. Let us not fail the Palestinian people again. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Maldives. I, the world born, the distinguished representative of Croatia. Thank you, Mr. President. We have gathered here again at the General Assembly to discuss the devastating humanitarian crisis in Gaza that erupted due to the heinous terrorist attack by Hamas on Israeli civilians. Since then, both Israelis and Palestinians had to face severe jeopardy. The crisis had led to the greatest source of life in the organization's history, with more than 140 UN staff deaths. Despite it evoking Article 99, the Security Council had failed to do any necessary compromises to able the act. Croatia stands by the right of stable Israel to defend itself, and we support the demand for unconditional release of all hostages held by Hamas and other groups. We emphasize basic human rights and the adherence of international humanitarian law. Therefore, Croatia supported the proposed resolution of Austria against the ceasefire. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Croatia. I, the whole board, the distinguished representative of Switzerland. Thank you, Mr. President. Ladies and gentlemen, heads of states and government excellencies. Switzerland voted yes to the resolution tabled by Egypt. This resolution addresses the most pertinent issue, the protection of civilians and rapid, safe, unhindered access for the people in need in Gaza, where no one is safe today, and where the humanitarian system is at risk of complete collapse. Even Switzerland faced many consequences and hardships during the World War II. Many people lost lives, and thousands of families were bereaved and communities shattered. Even a significant portion of our land was taken by our enemies. But we maintained a remarkable resilience and fought back, showcasing our strength and determination. So, in the imminent term, the implementation of ceasefire for the humanitarian purposes and the protection of civilians and provision of aid must urgently save some lives. Switzerland will continue to help towards a political solution with accordance with the international law. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Switzerland. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Greece. Thank you, Mr. President. Ladies and gentlemen, in the echoing corridors of history, Greece stands before you with a heavy heart. Drawing upon our own Brazilian past as we implore the world to heed the crescendo in the israel Hamas conflict. We, who have weathered the storms of conflict and emerged stronger, know the enduring pain that lingers when the diplomacy falters. With an ancient land which is stories of both triumph and tragedy, Greece understands the profound impact of violence on a nation's soul. Our own history serves as a testament to the resilience born from the ashes of conflict. Today, we carry the weight of that history as we voted a yes to the ceasefire. Let the analysis of our collective past be a guide, a reminder that the past to lasting freedom, lasting peace, can only be found in the ordeal's journey of dialogue and understanding. So, Greece urges the global community to hear the echoes of our shared history and to work tirelessly for a ceasefire that will spare innocent lives and serve justice as needed. Thank you, Mr. President. of Greece. Distinguished delegates, honorable guests, as we draw this session of the United Nations General Assembly to a close, I express my gratitude for your dedication,
the policy and unwavering commitment of the ideals of this esteemed assembly. Throughout our deliberations, we have witnessed the power of dialogue, the strength of collaboration, and the resilience of diplomacy. Your contributions have illuminated the path towards collective solutions to the complex challenges that confront our world. In closing, let us carry forward the spirit of cooperation and understanding. Cultivated within these walls, may the resolutions crafted here serve as a testament to our shared commitment to a more just, equitable, and a peaceful global community. I extend my heartfelt appreciation to each delegate for your tireless efforts and constructive engagement. As we adjourn, let us remain in pursuit of a world where dialogue triumphs over discord and cooperation prevails over conflict. Until we convene again, I wish you all continued success and progress. I thank you all once again. The General Assembly session has been adjourned.